Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another 5-Minute Friday here on Hunky Vape, your vaping news and advocacy source once a week. All right, take a look at our first article of the day. It comes from Lohud. Judge orders New York to reimburse vaping group's cost for lawsuit on flavored e-cigarette ban. The judge has ordered New York State to reimburse a vaping trade group's attorney fees connected with the lawsuit over the state's attempt last year to ban flavored e-cigarettes. Acting State Supreme Court Justice Catherine Chalakis on Wednesday sided with the vaping group that argued state officials overreached their authority and thus should cover the legal costs associated with fighting the ban. Vape shops and the Vapor Technology Association trade group filed a lawsuit and are seeking about $381,000 in fees and costs from the state. Chalakis noted in the evidentiary hearing will be set to determine the amount if, if the amount is accurate, according to court records. However, Chalakis questioned the amount of money sought by the groups and ultimately determined that once the audit is done, the state is going to have to cough up the standard council fees associated with the lawsuit fighting the ban. So, Andrew Cuomo, is this a lot of money for you to pay for your ridiculous ban? Technically, yes, but so what? The taxpayers of New York are not going to have to cough up for your overreach. Next article comes from CBS Baltimore. Baltimore leaders propose a 30% tax on electronic smoking devices. These are not smoking devices, but they are electronic nicotine delivery systems. Regardless, a number of city leaders are proposing a 30% tax on electronic smoking devices sold in Baltimore. The legislation introduced at Monday City Council meeting would see distributors who sell electronic smoking devices to dealers in Baltimore pay a 30% tax on the device's wholesale value. Those who do not comply will face a fine of $1,000 and up to a year behind bars. Bill's currently being sponsored by Council President and Democratic Mayoral nominee Brandon Scott, as well as Council Members Mary Pat Clark, Shannon Green, Middleton, John T. Bullock, Ed Reisinger, Ryan Dorsey, Zeke Cohen, Leon Pickett, and Christopher Burnett. It has been referred to the City's Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. During Monday's council meeting, Scott said the bill is about looking for the public health of the community. More like the, the city of Baltimore is trying to find a bailout for the fact that their current tax coffers are empty because of the COVID-19 situation going on. Next article comes from WHAS11, channel ABC. Focus and question they have. Are kids vaping more during the pandemic? Seriously? How can kids be vaping more during the pandemic? Everybody's under lockdown. Louisville, Kentucky. For years, health officials have been warning us about the increased use of e-cigarettes and the dangers of the addiction. Back in February, they went to Bullet East High School to show how vaping was impacting their students, staff, and the curriculum. But COVID-19 has changed all that. In an email, Sarah Smith, Billet County Public Schools Director of Safe and Drug-Free Schools, said our violations, of course, have gone dramatically down during remote learning. Well, there's a big surprise. If they're not there, how can they do it? Regardless, once the kids did get back into school, they said that their violations are dramatic, drastically down. Drastically down to the point where I think they only had three violations this year. For the whole year. Compared to the same time last year, before COVID-19, there were 62 violations and dozens of vaping products were confiscated a year ago. But that's no longer the case. 
So, while we're talking about adolescent use of vaping technology products, let's take a look at e-cigarette use among middle school and high school students, United States 2020, since that's what they seem to be referring to all the time, right? Well, if you take a look at the data, I actually pulled up the actual scientific study that was done and published. Pulled up the numbers and um, threw them together for you because they do a very good job of taking the numbers and taking the percentages and only giving them or presenting them to you in a fashion where their argument sounds more valid than what it really is. So here's this little simple summary for you. How many, what percentage of the population in high school actually used a electronic cigarette is how they call it? 19.6%. It's about 3 million kids. Okay. Now that sounds pretty bad, right? I'll, I'll redirect this in a little bit. How many of these kids use this stuff on a daily basis? In high school, 5.5% of high school students use electronic cigarettes on a daily basis. In middle school, that drops to less than half a percent. Okay? The numbers are, speak for themselves when they're actually presented as a population of the whole. You can see for yourself that they are only cherry-picking the numbers for you. They warn you and scare you into saying, oh, over 3 million kids are vaping in high school. Okay, yeah, that does sound kind of bad. Well, it's only 20% of high school students. When I was in high school, you want to know what the numbers were? Let's just jump over and take a look at what they were in 1988, the year before I graduated. Based on a survey in 1988, an estimated 91 million adults in the United States were ever smokers, meaning they had at some point in their time, in their life, tried a cigarette. 10 years later, what was that number? 1999, the National Youth Tobacco Survey, do you know how, what percentage of kids had ever tried a cigarette? 47% in 1999. Let's jump to last year's data because that's the only year that they've actually released all the data. They keep scaring us with the numbers from this year because they're cherry picking them and presenting them to keep their argument running even though it's no longer valid. 1999, 47.3%. How about in 2019, last year? What percentage of kids had ever tried a cigarette in high school? How about 16%? It's weighted 16%. The actual answers were 15%. How about electronic cigarettes? What percentage of kids had ever tried an electronic cigarette? 34% last year. What are they this year? 24%. A drop of 10% in the past year alone in e-cigarette use. They haven't released all the numbers and all the data for this year. However, it's quite clear that the youth vaping epidemic is a thing of the past. It's gone. It's on a dramatic downfall, greater than it could have ever been with regular cigarettes. So, last bit of uh, science for you guys in our last article for today. Vapor Voice was the one that published this. Study, COPD smokers benefit by switching to vaping. A recent study has found that smokers with COPD who switch to vaping ameliorate some harm associated with smoking and benefits persist long term. COPD smokers who switch to electronic cigarettes, their health outcomes at a five year follow up. That was the name of the study. It states that the significant reductions in toxic exposures from substituting electronic nicotine delivery systems for combustible electronic for combustible cigarette consumption is expected to bring about substantial health gains. 
And the tobacco harm reduction strategy may save more lives more swiftly than previously possible, wrote the researchers. However, the odds of completely abstaining from conventional cigarettes for end users are variable, meaning some people, they pick up a vape and they can't completely give up the cigarettes. Most studies suggest low quit rates for ENDS devices. Having investigated earlier poor quality vaping products with inadequate nicotine delivery profiles. On the contrary, more recent and better designed randomized control trials using high quality vaping products are now showing remarkable quit rates, even compared with nicotine replacement therapies. Some of these studies are suggesting and stating using the data that they gathered, that using a vape to quit smoking is five times better, five times more successful than traditional nicotine replacement therapy, such as patches, gums, and sprays. Of the survey's 1,090 participants, 75.7% stated that they had benefits in respiratory symptoms after switching, and less than 1% reported worsening of their symptoms. Additionally, the study found a marked reduction in the yearly exacerbations of COPD and other health improvements. The three-year follow-up confirmed that these improvements have persisted long-term. The Canadian Vaping Association says it believes the medical community must review these types of studies to better understand vaping as a harm reduction and educate their patients on the true relative risks of vapor products. Over the last several years, the medical community has stated that the risks of vaping were largely unknown, said Daryl Tempest, executive director of the Canadian Vaping Association. Fortunately, this is no longer the case. There is now a body of research to support vaping is less harmful than smoking and more effective than nicotine replacement therapy products. The Canadian Vapor Association urges health professionals to review the science and encourage patients to reduce their harm through vaping. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've been touting this numerous times. Vaping is at least 95% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. The newest research that is coming out using better, newer, more efficient products have changed that to 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. And let's not forget the Cancer Research UK has done studies on nicotine vapors and they compare them to never smokers and have found that there is only a 1% increased chance of getting cancer when using vapor products compared to people that have never smoked or never been around cigarettes or any type of device at all. So, once again, my word to you is, keep on vaping. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And that's it for today.